Hey guys, how you doing? All right. How are Good. you? I'm doing fine. Good. Somebody can hear me. You, uh, yeah, I can hear you. Basically, guys, I'm sorry that you're not seeing my lovely face tonight, but really what happened is I taught back-to-back -back classes on Tuesday. It kicked my butt on Wednesday. So as a consequence, I'm basically teaching this from my bed tonight. So uh, uh, here's your night story in chemistry. No? Come on, Andrew, at least a little smile. So basically, guys, that's why I'm not, uh, uh, I'm not uh, showing my face tonight is because uh, I am in bed just to make myself a little more comfortable. So I apologize about that, but we'll get through this and find this kind. Now, is there anybody that has not had moles before? Anybody that has not had moles? I'm hearing crickets. So if I'm hearing crickets, this means I'm not start, starting at bottom level. Lewis, I saw you in here. Christina, you here? Uh, Nathaniel. Yeah. Oh. Thank yes, you. I'm here. Marie. I saw you, Marie. Donovan. Yeah. I'm here. Thank you, Marie. I saw you. Donovan. Max. Maxwell. Armitha, I saw you in here. Neela, I saw. Kaylin, I saw. Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Malin. Malin. Who said she's here in the chat? Thank you. Jordan. Here. Mariah. Here. Aaron. Aaron. Uh, Sheridan, I saw. Mila. Do you hear Mila? Mila? Alec. Alec, Brian, I saw Sarah Sullivan. Ali, I saw, and Andrew. Anybody whose name I did not call today? I just joined Michael Miller. I got you, Mike. I saw you Thank coming you. in. Actually, Thank you. your name was popping up just as I saw your, uh, uh, your name flash up there. Got you. Okay. Appreciate it. No problem. Again, guys. This is, God, my back's itchy. I'm sorry, but this is required. All right. Uh, all right, everybody has had moles before. Basically, this is a dry lab. It's involving nothing more than a workshop on how to do moles, okay? So I'm gonna take you back and we're gonna go through a few things, then what, there are going to be eight problems for this particular uh, report. There are going to be eight problems in which you're going to have to answer various questions on them. So yeah, it's going to be another long one. So uh, uh, you're going to, what I'm going to do is there are eight problems. About three of them are duplicates. So I'm going to show you about five of those problems when we get through it. Is everybody seeing everybody seeing the slideshow that says moles on it? Yes. 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 Yeah. Ah, thank you very much. So, Jordan. Jordan, how many eggs are there? Um, in all of it? Yeah. 60. 60 eggs, right? Yeah. Can that be expressed in another way? Five dozen. Five dozen, okay. And the way you go from five dozen to 60 eggs is you have to have a conversion. You have to know that there are 12 eggs in one dozen so that the dozens cancel and you're left with eggs. Make sense, Jordan? Yes, sir. Mariah, 
How much paper's there, Mariah? I can't really tell. You can't really tell? Like okay. Five stacks. Five stacks. Okay. What do they call a stack? Anybody know what a stack of paper is? A ream. A ream. So, Mariah, we have five reams here, right? Anybody know how many sheets of paper are in a ream? Depends. 500? 500. It doesn't depend. There are 500 sheets in a ream. So, again, if I have five reams and I want to know how many sheets, I just multiply by how many sheets are in one ream. And that gets me in the five reams, 2,500 sheets. So guys, all I'm trying to do here is show you all mole problems are, are very, very simple dimensional analysis problems. You are going to have something you wanna know. Like in this example, you wanna know how many sheets, that's gonna go on the right side of the equal sign. You're gonna be given something that's going to be the information that is your data, or that's going to be the information that's in your problem. In between these two things, you're going to need to have a conversion figure. What you want in that conversion figure is going to go on top. What you want to get rid of goes on the bottom. So if we're going to deal with this stuff, guys, a dozen's 12 anythings. If you have a dozen donuts, you have 12 of them. If you have a dozen porcupines, you have 12 porcupines. Similarly, a ream is 500 anythings. If I have 500 tops, that means I have a ream's worth of tops. They're just counting numbers. They're numbers that's made to make life easier for us to do our work. They're tools. As a chemist, our counting number is the mole. And mole, by definition, is equal to 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. <sighs> okay? We need such a large number because the weight of a neutron or a proton is so very, very small. So how have we come up with this? Well, we came up with it by, there was a first a guy by the name of Avogadro. And basically what he hypothesized is that the number of atoms of a gas are directly related to the volume of that gas. Now he didn't actually come up with the number. That was left for a guy by the name of Proust. And he used oxygen as his standard. It was already known that oxygen had eight neutrons and eight electrons. And we already know that oxygen is diatomic. By diatomic meaning two oxygens are bonded together to make an O2. So in each O2, there are 16 protons and 16 neutrons. Now Proust suggested that if we count the neutrons as one and the protons as two, we're going to have 32 grams of oxygen, 16 from the neutron contribution, 16 from the proton. Now, we know what each neutron and proton weighs. They weigh each 1.67 times 10 to the minus 24th. So if we do that, if we take 32, the number of protons and neutrons in our oxygen atom, and we multiply that by the weight of a proton or a neutron. We come up with this number, 5.344 e to the 23rd grams. That's the actual mass of one molecule. 
So if we have 32 grams and we divide it or we multiply it by one molecule over 5.344 e to the minus 23rd, we come up with Avogadro's number. So that's how we came up with that particular number. Now, bottom line, O is complicated. Oxygen is very, very reactive, and it's also contained as a molecule. So what they decided was they decided, okay, carbon's a little safer, we're gonna use that. So when we have, when carbon has six neutrons and six protons, we have an atomic weight of 12 for carbon 12. That's our standard. Everything else in the periodic table is compared back to carbon. So if we would do the same math on carbon that we just did on oxygen, we would come up with 12 grams of carbon equals 6.022 e to the 23rd atoms of carbon. Now we just have to designate that large number as something. We're going to call it a mole. Why, didn't we, why we didn't call it a grasshopper is beyond me. We call it a mole. So we have our relationships. One mole is equal to 6.022 e to the 23rd because we said it is. 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, that's equal to our atomic or molecular mass, depending upon whether we're talking about an element or a compound. And our atomic or molecular mass is also equal to one mole. There's only one value of this that's changing, and that is the atomic or molecular mass. And that's changing based upon which element or which compound we have. So we have three relationships, ladies and gentlemen, that we're going to exploit. Okay? Uh, Neela. Neela? Yes? You have 32 inches. How many feet is that? One. 32 I'm sorry, inches. 32 what? inches. Three. What? Okay, Neela, what do you want to know? What, what am I asking for? You're asking for feet. So, feet is what I want to know. That goes on the right side of the, of the uh, equal sign. Okay? Mm hmm. Make sense, Neela? Yes. So, where are we starting from? How many inches did I give you? 32. 32, that's what we're starting from. So in order to solve this problem, we want to end, end up with feet. So feet goes on top of my conversion. Right. We want, to, we want to get rid of inches. So inches goes on the bottom. Yes. So to get the number of feet from 32 inches, we have to multiply the 32 inches by one foot over 12 inches. And we get 2.7 feet. That makes sense to you, Neela? Yes, it does. All right. Now, if I want to go from molecules to moles, Neela? Yeah? What do I want to end up with? Molecules. I want to go from molecules to moles. Mm -hmm. Oh, then you want moles. So if I want to end up with moles in my conversion, what's going to go on top? Moles. And if I start with molecules, what goes on the bottom? Molecules. So guys, look. Look how simple this is. I have three relationships. I know that one mole is equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. So if I'm changing from molecules to moles, all I got to do is put one mole over Avogadro's number. On the other hand, if I'm going from moles to grams, uh, Neela, I bothered you enough tonight. 
Let's see who else is out there. Brian. Brian? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. All right. If I'm going from moles to grams. All right. In my conversion, what goes on top? Um, I want to I want to end up with grams. Oh. What goes on top? Molecules. Brian. Wait. Hold on. Brian. Oh, mole? I'm going from moles to grams. What? It, what do I end up with? You end up with grams. So what goes on top? Grams. Whatever you end up with, whatever you want. That's the conversion factor that's going to go on top. I'm starting with moles. What do I want to get rid of, Brian? Uh, you want to get rid of the moles. So if I want to get rid of moles, that goes on the bottom of my conversion. All right. So I'm going to multiply moles times grams per mole. Now, Brian, mm -hmm. if I can ever get back there. Okay, I'm changing from mass. I'm, I'm changing from moles to mass. These three relationships, which one of them relates grams with moles? One, two, or three? One, two, or three? Which one's going to relate moles to grams? Moles to grams. Um, is it the second one? Do you see moles anywhere in there, Brian? No. Is it the first one then? Do or you see? Do you see three? grams anywhere in there? Brian, do you see grams anywhere in the first equation? No. Okay, so. My process of elimination, Brian, where are we going to? The third one. Third one. Okay. So you have to understand when we are talking about atomic or molecular mass, we are talking about the grams that make up one mole worth of the element or the compound. So atomic or molecular mass are going to be in units of grams. So we're going to use this bottom relationship and we're going to put grams over moles. Now, if I am dealing with a compound, I have to figure out its molecular weight. The way I do that is I figure out what the contribution of each element within that molecule is, and then I add them up. For example, if I have carbon dioxide, I have, I, what I can do is I can set up a little chart like this with the element one column, number of the element, the other, atomic weight, and contribution. If I have CO2, I have one carbon atom. Its atomic weight is 12.1. So one times 12.1, carbon's contribution is 12.01. Oxygen has two. Its atomic weight is 16. So oxygen's contribution is 32. So to get the molecular weight of carbon dioxide, I add the 12.01 to the 32 to get 44.01. Are we good, guys? Am I saying anything stupid yet? No. All we're going to do is use simple dimensional analysis. I want moles, I have 45 grams. Uh, let's go with Andrew. Andrew? Yep. Okay, Andrew, I have 45 grams of H2, how many moles is this? What do I want? See, we want the molecular weight 
Um, no, 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 just be simple. Analyze the question first. I have 45 grams of, of hydrogen. How many moles is this? What do I want to know? It would be two moles. No. Stop. Answer, answer the question I'm asking, okay? I have 45 grams of hydrogen, H2. I want to know how many moles is that in there. What's the question asking me to, to determine? It's asking you to determine how many moles you, or how many moles okay. uh, you'd get from 45 grams of H2. So moles are what I want. Moles are going to go on the right side of the equal sign. What's given, Andrew? The 45 grams. 45 grams. Okay, now. I've got to multiply some conversion factor by 45 to get my moles. What do I want to keep, Andrew? What goes on the top side of the conversion factor? Moles. What goes on the bottom side? What do I want to get rid of? You want to get rid of the grams. So don't grams go in the bottom? Yep. So if I am doing this, I'm going to have a relationship between grams and moles. Andrew, do you know what that relationship is? Not offhand. All right, we have hydrogen, don't we? Yep. OK, do we know? How many grams one mole of H2 is? Not offhand. OK. OK, Andrew. Do we have a mole equal to something on this page? The make or the molecular mass. Molecular mass. OK. We have H2. Can you tell me what the molecular mass of H2 is? Um. Would it be 1.0079? That's the, that's the atomic weight of hydrogen. We're dealing with H2, so you have to multiply that by 2. OK? So in effect, I'm going to take my one mole of H2 is equal to 2 times my atomic weight so one mole is equal to 2.016. Now, Andrew, what number goes on top of my equation? 45 grams times how many moles? Uh, one mole. Over how many grams? 2.016. Absolutely. And you thought you couldn't do this. So. We do that math out, we get 45 grams is equal to 22 moles of H2. New problem. Uh, Jordan. Yeah. You have 3.29 moles of naphthalene. How many molecules is this? Jordan, what do I want to know? Molecules. So that goes on the right side of the equal sign. What do I know? Moles. 3.29 moles. So if I want to get molecules and I have moles in my conversion, what goes on top? Molecules. And I have a relationship that one mole is equal to that many molecules. 
So I'm going to put the molecules over moles. Jordan, what number goes on top? 3.29. No, no, that's where we're starting from. We're taking the 3.29 and multiplying it by the conversion. And Jordan, you've already said that the conversion is going to contain, contain molecules over moles. So what's going to go on top? Where's my conversion in this slide, Jordan? Molecules over moles. Molecules over moles. How many molecules? I'm not sure. What's the first line tell you in this slide? Uh, okay. okay. Do, do I have a relationship between molecules and moles here? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so what number is going to go on top? Three point two nine times six point oh two to the twenty third. Absolutely, divided by one mole. We do that math out, and that math problem works out to be one point nine eight e to the twenty fourth molecules. Million dollar question, Allie. Allie? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. We just solved for 3.29 moles of naphthalene. And we determined that 3.29 moles of naphthalene contains 1.98 e to the 24th molecules of naphthalene. Mm hmm. Allie, if I have 3.29 moles of benzene, how many molecules of benzene do I have? You would, if I had 3.29, then I would still have 1.98 times 10 to the 24th molecules. Good, good, good. The conversion doesn't change, guys. It, it doesn't matter because in the first instance, we were talking about moles of naphthalene the number we calculate is going to be molecules of naphthalene. If we change that label to moles of benzene, the number is going to stay the same because our conversion is the same. Only it's going to be molecules of benzene. The only difference is the molecules of naphthalene are going to weigh more than the molecules of benzene. All right, how much does 7.54 e to the 24th molecules of sodium sulfate weigh? Lewis. Yes. Okay. We wanna know what here, Lewis? How much of 7.5424 molecules of NAS, Na2SO4 way? So what do we want to know? What are we trying to find out? Um, how many, how much it weighs? Yeah, the grams. Simple enough, that's what we're finding. So if we want to know grams, grams going to go on the right side of the equal sign. Now, Lewis, where are we starting? With the first element? Not with the first element. What does the problem give us to start with? Mm, you're asking if we need, oh, well, we'd be, we'd be looking for the molecular weight eventually but what let's figure out where we're starting from lewis what number does it give us what else is in the problem lewis the molecules we're starting with molecules as a matter of fact we're starting with 7.54 e to the 24th molecules right yeah so if we want to end lewis if we want to end with grams and we want to get rid of molecules in my conversion factor what's going to go on top 
Grams or molecules? Oh, grams. Grams is going to go on top, and molecules is going to go on the bottom. Now, we got to figure out what that relationship is. The relationship between molecules and grams is 6.022 e to the 23rd molecules is equal to the molecular weight. So, yes, you're absolutely right. We are going to have to figure out the molecular weight for sodium sulfate. The way we do that is we add up the contributions. Two sodium atoms each weigh 22.99. One sulfur that weighs 32.06. And four oxygens that weigh 16 each. I add all of those up and I get 142.04 grams. So for sodium sulfate and only sodium sulfate, 142.04 grams is equal to Avogadro's number. Put that, put that into my equation, which is in the very bottom. And I multiply the 7.54 e to the 24th molecules by 142.04 grams over Avogadro's number. This gives me a weight of 1,780 grams. Okay, we did six of three of the six types. We did grams to moles, but could we go from moles to grams? Shake your head, Allie. We started from grams. That's the problem we did. We went from grams to moles. But by using that same conversion factor, we can go from moles to grams by simply inverting the conversion. We did moles to molecules, but we could go from molecules to moles again by inverting the conversion. And we did molecules to grams, but we could go from grams to moles by inverting the conversion. The other thing you have to understand is, up to this point, we have been using molecules. Molecules have the same rules as atoms. The only difference is with atoms, we're using elements and atomic weights. With molecules, we're using compounds and molecular weights. Harder problem, guys. You have 23 and a half grams of ammonium phosphate. How many atoms of hydrogen are there? Recognize you've been given the weight of the compound, yet you're asked for the number of atoms of an element within that compound. You also have to realize there's a relationship between atoms of hydrogen and molecules of ammonium phosphate. Can anybody tell me what that relationship is? Come on, it's not that tiring. Yeah, I know this is the last class of the week. Come on. How many atoms of hydrogen are there in one molecule of ammonium phosphate? Three. Are there three? Twelve. There are twelve. Remember, oh, that's the subscript. I What's didn't realize that? the four was for the hydrogen because I couldn't, I didn't even notice that was a Okay, four. sorry. All right. If you're objecting to that, okay, we can fix that. Better? Yes. So you're saying that there are 12 hydrogens for every molecule of ammonium phosphate. All right. 
How are we going to do this problem? Let's strategize. Come on. Remember, guys, the longer it takes you to answer these questions, the longer we're going to be here tonight. Would you first have to figure out the atomic weight of hydrogen specifically? Do we have a weight of hydrogen in there? No. Nope. Hydrogen's part of the problem or part of the answer. What do you need the weight of? What is the 23.5 grams? The mass of the compound. The mass of the compound. So are we going to need the, uh, are we going to need just the atomic weight of hydrogen to do something with that 23.5? No, you also need the atomic weight of the whole compound. I'm going to need the entire molecular weight of ammonium phosphate in order to generate a relationship between grams and atoms. Okay. I've got ammonium phosphate. Guys, if you haven't figured out how to do molecular weights by now, this is, this is certainly a perfect time for you to practice on it. All right? By the way, this three should be a subscript too. So my atomic, my molecular weight for the Ammonium phosphate is 149.10. What do I do with that, guys? Don't you divide the 23.5 by the molecular weight? What will that give me? Moles. It will give me moles. Okay, we can do that. We can divide the 23.5 by the 149 point whatever, 149.10. That will give us moles of ammonium phosphate. We still don't have atoms of hydrogen. Come on, we got moles of ammonium phosphate. How do we go from moles of ammonium phosphate to atoms of hydrogen? Do we have a relationship between hydrogen and ammonium phosphate? Do we go from moles to molecules? Bingo. Molecule atoms. We're going to go, we're going to take our 23.5, like you said, we're going to divide it by the 149.10, and we're going to multiply that by Avogadro's number. So we can do it like you guys said, taking one mole over 149, and then multiplying it by 6.022 e to the 23rd over one mole. I just kind of contracted that. So we now have molecules of ammonium phosphate. So how do we go from molecules of ammonium phosphate to atoms of hydrogen? Marie, come on, give me, help me out here, Marie. Kaylin. Times it by 12. Thank you so much. If we have molecules of ammonium phosphate and we know there are 12 atoms of hydrogen for every one molecule of ammonium phosphate, then all we got to do is multiply it by 12. Problem one in the lab. These are not exact. These are not exact 
I've changed the numbers around. You got 143 grams of copper sulfate pentahydrate. What that means is that for our molecular weight, we, not, we have to not only add one carbon, one sulfur, and four oxygens, but we also have to add five times two, 10 more hydrogens, and five times one, five oxygens. I have a number of grams of a compound. I want to know how many moles. What is my conversion factor? All I want are the labels. If I want moles and I'm starting with grams, what goes on top? Moles. And what goes on bottom? Grams. So I've got to figure out my relationship between moles and grams. One mole is equal to what? The molecular weight of, oh, 143. Well, the molecular weight of CuSO4. Absolutely. So I'm going to add up my carbon, copper sulfate, one copper, one sulfur, four oxygens. That adds up to 249.71. Uh, oh, sorry, my bad. One copper, 63, one sulfur is 32, four oxygens is 64, plus each water weighs 18.02 five of them, that gives us our molecular weight of 249.71. So if I'm starting out with 143 grams, I multiply that by one mole over the molecular weight. Now I have the moles of copper sulfate. All right. Uh, let's go, Marie. Marie, I have mole. Now I have calculated moles of copper sulfate pentahydrate. How do I figure out molecules from that? It's gonna be... What do I wanna know, Marie? A molecule? Wanna know molecules. Mm -hmm. What am I starting with? With mole. Moles. So what goes on top? Molecules. And the bottom? Mole. All right, so, Marie. Yes. What's the relationship between molecules and moles? Avogadro's number. Avogadro's number. So, this is the second line. I have my moles of my copper sulfate. I'm going to multiply that by Avogadro's number of molecules over one mole. This gives me the number of molecules. Now, the third question, how many total atoms? When he asks you how many total atoms, he's not asking you how many atoms are in one molecule. He wants to know how many molecules there are, or how many atoms there are in 143 grams of copper sulfate. So if we want to know how many atoms there are total, we have to find out how many atoms there are in one molecule. I have one copper plus one sulfur two, plus four oxygens, two and four are six, plus five times two, 10, six and 10 is 16, plus five times one, five, 16 and five, there are 21 atoms in every copper sulfate pentahydrate. So now all I gotta do is take my molecules, multiply it by 25 atoms over one mole. This gives me the number of atoms total. Questions, guys? No. I got sucrose. Guys, we just went through this same problem. I got 42.68 grams of sucrose. Set up 
number of moles. Nathaniel. Yep. I have 42.68 grams of sucrose. I yes. want to know how many moles that is. Okay. So we want to end up with moles. Um, and on the bottom of it, is it going to be the 42.68? No, it's not going to be because no. 42. 42. Okay, is it going to be the atomic mass then of the whole compound? Of the yes, you're absolutely yeah. right. Okay, the okay. The molecular yeah. weight of the entire compound. Cool. Good enough. That's what I wanted you to do. I just want when when I'm asking these questions, just set them up because I've got the math done. He said hopefully. So, if I add up 12 carbons times 12 22 hydrogens times one, 11 oxygens times 16. If I add all that up, I get a molecular weight of 342. So if I want to know how many moles, my 42.68 gets multiplied by one mole over the molecular weight. This ends up being about 0.125 moles. All right, Sheridan. Yes. Okay, Sheridan, I got, right now, I've got 1.125 moles of sucrose. Can you tell me, Sheridan, how many molecules I have? Set up the problem. Uh, so, you want to find molecules, so that's going to be on the right of the equal sign, and off, and uh, it's also going to be on the top of the uh, conversion. And on the Big bottom, thumbs up. Even more. Big thumbs up. Absolutely. All right. So, Sheridan, do we have a relationship between molecules and moles? Uh, yes. Uh, it's the uh, Avogadro's number. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my my 0.125 moles. I'm going to multiply it. Sheridan said we put molecules on top. Avogadro's number of molecules over one mole. This gives me the total number of molecules. Kaylin. Was that me? That was you. Oh, I, no. I have 7.51 e to the 22nd molecules of sucrose. Uh huh. Can you tell me how to get the number of total atoms? Uh, add up all the atoms in one molecule and then times that by the number of molecules we have. Very good. I got 12 carbons plus 22 hydrogens for 34 plus 11 oxygens. There are 44 atoms in every one molecule of sucrose. So I take the total number of molecules, my 7.51 e to the 22nd, and I multiply that by 45 atoms over one molecule. This gives me 339 e to the 24th atoms. Questions, guys? Anything confusing about this? Well, Dr. Musgrave does his best. Now, right now, I want you to look in your lab guide, your lab manual. There is a typo. Problem three, we are dealing with an element. So the typo is, it says molecular mass is equal to mass divided by moles. Because we're dealing with a, an element, it's the atomic mass that's equal to the mass divided by the moles. If I was dealing with a compound, then the molecular weight would be equal to the mass divided by moles. Do you understand that, ladies and gentlemen? Yes. All right, we're dealing with an element. We have 4.384 moles of the substance that, that weighs 240.7 grams. What is the atomic mass? Remember, Atomic mass 
is mass divided by moles. Neela, set up that problem. I'm sorry, say again? All right. You know, by definition, it's given to you that the atomic mass is the mass of the substance divided by the number of moles of that substance. I have 4.384 moles and it weighs 240.7 grams. So tell me, what is the atomic mass? The atomic mass would be the 240.7 divided by the 4.384 moles. Okay, I, I didn't do the math on these. All right, somebody do the math on it. 54.9. All right, now, if it's 54.9, how do you use that information to identify which element it is? Don't you look on the periodic table? Sometimes the most obvious answers are the best answers. Good, Neela. So 54.9 corresponds to what element? Hold on. Hold on. Manganese. Manganese. OK. OK. Uh, where? Oh, yeah. All right. Next question down. How many total atoms do we have? Come on, guys. What are we dealing with? Are we dealing with an element or a compound? Is an element. element? Okay, right. we're, we're dealing with an element. Now, is there a relationship between moles and atoms? Yes. What is that? Is that when you uh, multiply by the 6.02? Absolutely. Two? One mole is equal to Avogadro's number. Do we have the number of moles that we have? Do we have the number of moles of the substance? Yes. So all we have to do is take the 4.384 and multiply that by Avogadro's number. This will give us the atoms. Now, the subtlety here, guys, when we were dealing with compounds, we had to multiply by the number of atoms within the one molecule because we were dealing with compounds. Here, we are dealing with elements. So af right after we multiply by Avogadro's number, that is the element. That is the number of atoms. We good, guys? Come on. Yes. yes, good. Okay, I've got either two or three more problems. You have 14.0 milliliters of liquid with a density of 0.8765. If this quantity also equals 0.157, first off, what is the mass of the sub sample? Oh my God, he put densities in there. We haven't looked at densities since the third week of chemistry. I thought I could forget all that. Nah, -uh. You have all the information there, guys. Volume times density. Volume times the density. I'm gonna take my 14.0 milliliters and multiply that by 0.8765. That will give me the grams. 
Okay, guys. Do we know how to get atomic? Uh, do we know how to get molecular weight from mass and moles? How do we do it in this problem? How do we get atomic mass from mass and moles? Mass divided by moles equals the atomic weight. So, do we have mass now? Yes. Do we have the number of moles? Yes. Neela, tell me what number goes on top of what number? The mass goes on top of um, the 0 0.157 moles. Yeah, I'm trying to... Okay, multiplying the 14 milliliters by 0 0.8765 gives us 12.3 grams. So I take the 12.3 grams and divide it by 0 0.157 moles. That gives me a molecular mass of 78.2 grams. How do we get the molecules, Armethia? Yes. I've got all these numbers out there. Mm -hmm. The mass of the sample is 12.3. The molecular mm -hmm. mass is 78.2. Mm -hmm. I have 14 milliliters, I have 0.8765 density, and I have 0.157 moles. Yeah. Armethia, how am I going to go, what am I going to use to get how many molecules I have? Um, Avogadro's number. And what am I going to multiply Avogadro's number by? Um, the mass. Avogadro's number is equal to the molecular weight. Do we know what this substance is, Armethia? Uh, no. <laughs> no. So we're not gonna we're not gonna equate Avogadro's number with grams. What else is Avogadro's number equal to? Uh, moles. Do we know the number of moles here? Yes. So. I'm going to take my 0.157 moles and do what with it? Multiply it by what? The mass number. Armethia. Yes. You just got done saying that Avogadro's number is equal to one mole, right? Yes. So I want, I want molecules. Mm -hmm. So what's going to go on top? What's the label of the thing going on top if I want molecules? Moles. Oh, I, no. All right, that's fine, Armethia. Uh, somebody help her here. What's going to go on top? Molecules. Molecules. How many molecules? Six point zero twenty two. Absolutely, six point zero two two. E to the 23rd molecules. Over how many moles? One mole. Another problem did. Oh, I actually did this one. Okay, I got two more problems and then we're done, guys. Density of chlor dichloromethane is 1.33 grams. If I have... Sorry, I got to move something. 25 milliliters. What's my molecular mass? Then volume times the uh, density. Volume times the density. I'm going to take 25 and multiply it by 1.33. And that's going to give me 33.3 grams of my substance. All right, what's the molecular weight? Do we know what the substance is?
dichloromethane. So how do I get the molecular weight of dichloromethane? Look on the uh, periodical, okay. periodic chart and add. Well, even if you don't have a periodic table, just substitute atomic weight of carbon and atomic weight of chlorine in there, okay? How do you get the molecular weight of dichloromethane? Guys, this is like trying to shove Brussels sprouts down my throat. It's not easy. Come on. Somebody with the periodic table, tell me what the molecular weight of dichloromethane is. 94.928. Thank you. You got that by taking 2 times 12 and 2 times 35 and a half. So... How many moles? If I know what my mass of my sample, my mass is 33.3. .3. How many moles do I have? Point 0.35. Very good. You take the grams and multiply it by one mole over the molecular weight, you get 3.35 gram moles. So how many molecules do you have? You have 0.35 moles. How many molecules is that? Tell me how to do it. 0.35 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23. Absolutely. And if I want to know how many atoms there are total, I take the number of molecules and multiply it by four atoms per molecule. All right, do you guys want to go through the last problem or you want me to cut you loose now? I would take the last problem if we can. Maybe that was the last problem. That was the last problem. I will take no more problems then. Did I skip this one? I think yeah, did. I did. I did skip this one. Uh, 1.14 moles has a mass of 52.63 grams. If it has a density of 0.789, what's the volume? How do you get the volume from the mass and the density? Mass divided by density. Absolutely. And that's going to be 52.63 divided by 0.789. You got 66.7. Okay, that's our mass of 66.7. What's the molecular mass? Come on, guys, we're almost done. I feel like I'm taking the whole train on my back and pulling it up. Isn't it um, the 66.7 divided by the moles? There we go. 66.7 divided by 1.14. That gives us 58.51. Okay. Last question. Thank God. How many molecules are present? Three point five times ten to the twenty-five. How'd you get that number? The mole, the fifty-eight point five times. No, 16. that's the. That is the. You don't, okay. You don't have. You don't have that much. That much. You don't have the molecular weights worth. Of, sample. So you can't relate that number to the number of molecules. But there is a number that you can relate. Would it be the 1.14? 1.14. How many? What's the conversion? 
Wouldn't you just multiply it by the 6.02? Absolutely. 1.14 moles times 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules per mole. Okay, I'm going to stop share now. And I'm going to start share again and hopefully come up with. Yay, everybody seeing the screen? Yes. Yeah. All right. I'm just going to go and take you through the report. Okay. All right, at this point, if you don't want to stick around, you can kick, take off. All right, it's going to take you through questions. Molecular weight, it's going to be one of those. Now, when you're doing this, okay, what you have to do is you have to plug in to these values. Plug into these values what you think goes there. All right? You want to know three is moles of carbon sulfate. So you look over here. You got two choices. It's either this one or this one. It's going to go there. Okay? The other key here, guy, is if you don't use an answer, if you don't use an answer, make sure, absolutely, make sure that you put in there four that you did not use it. If you do not put in a four for unused answers, they will be marked wrong. So I want to go from grams to moles. What goes on top? Moles. So moles of, yeah, moles goes on top. So which one of these answers are you going to put in for one? The first one. So I'm going to put a one there, okay? This description should go in the first position, all right? What goes below that? The molecular weight. Okay, what's the only thing here that could possibly be the molecular weight? The last one. 39.72. The last one, okay? Then you're going to have to do the multiplication out to figure out which of these answers is right. The one you think is right, you're going to mark with three. The one that isn't used, you're going to mark with a four. Do you understand what is going on here? Yes. Second example, okay? We're going from some number of moles of carbon of copper sulfate we want to know the molecules so what number is going to go on top here molecules which not which which selection one two three four five or six going down which one are you going to put in number one Two. This one? No, number three, I believe. We want to end up with molecules. The question is asking for molecules. What number is going to go up here? Avogadro's number. Thank you, Allie. 
So that's going to go in as one. What's going to go in as number two? One mole. Thank you. Now, now you're going to have to do the math out. Whatever answer you came up with with the previous problem gets substituted in for moles. That gets multiplied by Avogadro's number over one mole. And so you say that's going to be something like 0.5. Say you think it's going to be this one. You're going to mark that three. All the others are going to be marked four. Are you understanding how this thing is working? Don't blame me. I'm only the person that's showing you how it's supposed to work correctly. I did not design this. I have no idea why he wants you to put the fours in for all your un unanswered questions. The thing is, if you don't put the fours in, you will get marked off for not putting them in. Is that clear, guys? Yeah. Do I yeah. need to go over any more of these things? No. Now, look at this. We're dealing with 25 que 29 questions. Just be aware, this is going to take some time just like the nomenclature did. Okay, any questions, guys? If you need a refresher on how to do this, I believe. Uh, All right, I'm in the mole concept. If you go, if you have run into problems and you can't remember what I was showing you about the, the matching exercise, he has an exercise in here to practice with it, okay? If you get confused, because I know everybody's going to go home right now and everybody's going to jump on this and everybody's going to do it while it's fresh in your mind. So guys, around about 10.30 next Wednesday night when you're panicking, if you panic, there is a exercise in here that will help explain how you're supposed to fill out that matching thing. Any other questions, guys? All right, that's all I have for you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. You have a good night too. Good night. Good night. I have a sort of un sort of related but not related question. Okay. On I'll the like... periodic table, when we're do adding up the masses, sometimes for hydrogen we use like the full 1.008, and sometimes people use 1.01. And then yep. I noticed like for oxygen, we have 15.99, but 15.9996. Yeah. Okay. So that, uh, sometimes we use the 16. So I just want to make sure, like, okay, thinking Ali. with significant figures and all that, like. Okay, Ali, where are you going? Where, where, where eventually are you going? Are you going on to Chem 1 and Chem 2? Yes. All right. Now, the thing about it is you got to look at your data. Mm hmm. All right, say you want the moles of hydrogen, okay? And you have five grams of hydrogen. That's your data. You're only given five grams of hydrogen. Right. You could just use one, one as your atomic weight of hydrogen because that's not going to limit your significant figures, is it? No. All right, if you have 5.1, then you're going to have to use at least 1.0 in order to not limit your significant figures. And that's what we're coming down to. You okay. never want to let your um, never want to let your atomic or molecular weights limit the number of significant figures of your data. Okay. 
So this means if you have weight of oxygen, 2.35552. In order to get the moles, you have to use 15.9994. Does that make sense? Yes. If I'm, if I'm going to be an absolute purist of this, Allie. Well, it's good because in my lecture class, our professor tells us not to worry about significant figures, but I'm doing a lot of the problems and I'm not who getting- Who the same. hell is your- He's who very the... sweet, man. Um, Constantine Shuniak. But I'm looking, I looked ahead- That I sound you had, that sound you just heard was a gun <laughs> being put to my temple oh. and a trigger being pulled. Yeah. Well, I'm looking at taking general chemistry uh, next semester. During the summer? Yeah. Yes. Allie, I would love to have you in the evening class. I saw that, but you're teaching in person, right? Yes. I want to do it. It just depends on if, because it's at 530. If I have to, I'm working remote still, but if we have to go back, in I'd be in Clearwater so I just don't know if I can make it to I, campus to be honest with you Ali I would love to have you as a student of mine again yeah. um you, is it going to be like you're going to start at 5 30 and it's going to be the full two hours yep every night okay and yes that's a that's an absolute okay uh I try and break it up with uh, um videos and things of that nature but there's only so much you can do i have to get the material presented in 10 weeks as opposed to 16. yeah so you will be busting your butt <laughs> uh is there not a lab offered during the summer i was i didn't see that anywhere no it's a little confused uh ali you're gonna have to go to another campus Okay. Were you looking specifically at Gibbs? No, I was just searching lab and I uh, could, I didn't see anything offered for summer. The, I, you know, I don't know what to tell you because I'm, I've only gotten the one class. That's all I got for the summer. Yeah. And I can't believe that I'm looking at the bare bones of what they're offering and I can't believe it. Yeah, three options, one T TBA, one during the day, and then Who's your TBA? Class. Who's TBA? What, where's, which campus? No, it didn't say, I don't think it said any, or maybe it was a woman teaching, but it was no. said online, but no time, so. If you can at least do the labs face-to-face, -face, I would, that's where you get the more that's where you get the most benefit out. You can teach chemistry remotely, lecture-wise. Yeah. These labs are horrible. They're, they're just horrible. I, it, there's no other way be, beyond, beyond it. It's, uh, you're trying to do something remotely and all you're ending up doing is giving more practice lectures and stuff. Yeah. Um, any case, what was your original question? Oh, we got your original question. Yeah, down. We, you got it. Good. Cause I also wanted to ask you about, um, the summer class too. I was just get your thoughts on that. So we're, I'm uh, good. it's, uh, my, my, what I, my suggestion to you, Ali is do not take anything else technical with it. Okay. Like if you if you were thinking about taking chemistry and math, unless you, you look like a fairly organized person. Yes. Can you do it? If you're a very organized person, absolutely. You can do it and get through it. However, you would not have a life. I already have a pretty full schedule working full time. So I, I don't know that I want to take any other. I then only take one. Yeah. Well, if I can work it out where I'm working from home those two days, then I think I'm definitely gonna, I'd love to take your class in the summertime. I feel like I've learned a lot more in this class. Speaking of which, how, how dry was the stuff today? 
It's not dry. Help. It's helping me because I am going all the stuff from lectures now. Making sense. Yeah. I so. try and I try and think bring things down to an extremely basic level. It was good. And uh, well, for some reason or other, this class tonight was literally literally like <laughs> dragging the train up the Matterhorn. Yeah. Maybe it's all the kids coming back from spring break. Could be. It's also yeah. the last class of the week, so. Okay, well, Allie, I'm well, gonna go I eat. I appreciate it. You answered my question, so I'm happy. Good enough. You take <laughs> care, you take care, thank and you. good luck to you no matter what, all right? All right, thank you very much. I'll see you next week. Okay, bye.